Welcome to another episode on Miro. Now, Miro. Don't forget, Miro, we can have two types of Miro. We can divide mirrors into play mirrors and curved mirror. Now, when you are saying curved mirror, the curved mirror can be dif- can be differentiated into two. Like it can be divided into two. We have the concave mirror and we have the convex mirror. Now, if you are saying concave mirror and concave, convex mirror, now, both are curved mirror, so they are curved. What am I saying? Is that this is concave, this is convex. Now, what's the difference between the two? You can see that they both curved, but concave, the reflecting side of the concave is the side that curves inward. That's why we can say it curves like a cave. It curves like a cave. So the reflecting side is the one that curved inward. But for the convex, is the reflecting side that curves outward. Is the reflecting side that curves outward. Now, I can say that concave mirror can also be known as converging, like converging mirror. Or let me even say it has the property of converging. But the convex has the property of diverging. Now, this episode, I will not be talking about the plane mirror, but I will be talking about the convex mirror. So in case you need explanation on the plane mirror, then follow the channel so that you can be given the real explanation on the play mirror. But this episode, we'll be talking about the curved mirror, both concave and the convex. Now, let us go. Now, if you're talking about mirror, let me use a concave as an example. Now, if you're having this, let's say this is the reflected side. Now, a point here is known as focus. So, F is focused. We have another point here it's known as C. And the C is known as center of curvature. It's known as center of curvature. Mind you, this C here, which is center of curvature, we have the point here to known as P. The point here is P. And the P is what is known as pole. Pole which is P, is the middle of the reflecting side of the mirror. So the middle, the center of this reflecting side of the mirror is the pole. But now, this one is called principal focus. And the distance from this principal focus to this pole, the distance from this pole to this principal focus is what's known as the focal length. (laughs) The distance between this pole to the principal focus here is what we know as the focal length. Now, this focal length is what we know as F. This focal length we know it as what? As F. But here, the C here is what we know as 2F. 2F, that is 2 focal length, is what? Is the center of curvature. What am I talking about? Now, if you observe something like this, let me use a small curved mirror here. Now, let's say this is where you have the focal length, the distance, your focus is here, and the center of curvature is here. Now, you observe that this can form a sphere like this. Sorry, it's my diagram. Now, this C here, is what's known as that's why they divide center of curvature as the point at which the sphere fall apart. What I was talking about, you could you can see that this C is at the middle of this circle here, is at the middle. And when you are talking about the distance from year to year, is what's known as radius. Distance from year to year as well is what's known as radius. 
distance from the central as well to this is what is known as radius and this as well can also be called radius so therefore the distance from this center of curvature to this pole is what is known as radius of a curvature so it's what is known as radius of a curvature the distance between this center of curvature to this pole is what is known as radius of a curvature so r is radius radius of curvature and which starts from the point of the pole to the world to the center of the curvature now let's go to the real business now let us differentiate between the concave mirror and the convex mirror now concave concave mirror and we have the convex mirror now don't forget i told you that the first thing that you have to know is that the properties their properties are different now when you have the property of a concave mirror i told you that it's what is converging is converging so that's why we can also call it converging mirror and the property here is what is diverging and that's why we can call it diverging mirror now if you observe it very well converging is something that comes from different points and meets at the point diverging is they are from the same point but they diverge to different points that's different now concave mirror has the property we call revem the concave mirror has the property we call revem but the convex mirror has a property we call verge now what are we talking about here revem let me denote let me decode this re verb verb now the real verb let me talk about the convex mirror first this v means virtual the em is erect the dm is diminish now what do you mean by erect erect means something that is up upright and diminish image that is the convex mirror produces a virtual image erect image and diminished image what do you mean by diminished image diminished image means the image will be smaller than the objects placed at the front of the walls of the mirror but yeah this concave mirror can produce two cases it can be real it can produce real image and sometimes it can produce virtual image but don't forget the concave mirror only produces virtual image but concave mirror can produce real image or virtual image and what are the conditions for this to produce real image and virtual image but i'm coming that shows that if you are using a convex mirror if it's if it's erect and diminished that shows that it was is virtual but if you are using a concave mirror then if it's erect and magnified erect and magnified then it produces a what a virtual image but if it's uh inverted then it produces what it produces real image what do you mean by inverted inverted image and erect image they are opposite inverted as i called erect to be upright that is something that stand upright the same direction with the objects you place but inverted means upside down it's not be in the same direction so inverted means upside down but erect means upright now at the same time magnified is opposite of the words of diminish now as i said that diminish is what is diminished image if it's produced diminished image is the image that is smaller than the ones than the object but if it says magnified image magnified image is bigger than the ones than the object 
than the object. Magnified image is bigger than the object. Now, don't forget, we have a formula that says, I'm coming, we have a formula, we have magnification formula that says linear magnification. The linear magnification M is equal to image distance. And image distance is denoted as V over object distance. Which can be what? U. This linear magnification as well can be image height which is HI over object height. Now, we have what we known as mirror's formula. Even under lenses, you'll be using this mirror's formula, but it has laws, it has things that guide it. Now, the mirror's formula says 1 over F is equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V. You can have it to be 1 over V plus 1 over U as well. Mind you, don't forget that F is focal length. U is object distance. And your V is what? Is image distance. Now don't forget. Now these are the formulas for linear magnification and at the same time, mirrors formula. Now, let us proceed. Now let us go to the differences between the concave and convex we are talking about the other time. Now this is the first one. Now the second one is that what is the condition? You know, this condition for the convex is straightforward. We all know that it produces virtual image. But this one is not straightforward. The one for the concave is not straightforward. The reason is because it can produce real image or virtual image. Now, come to the convex. Convex only produces virtual image. Now, because con convex produces virtual image, always take your U, the object distance, to be positive. The object distance, always take it to be positive. Distance. Now, for the V, take it to be negative. Because the image that is produced by the convex is virtual. Always take it to be negative. So the image distance, take it to be negative. Now, now, the focal length, the focal length F here is negative. The focal length of this is negative because, you know, if it's produced a virtual image, that shows the image is produced behind the mirror. Now, sometimes when you hear the statements, the image is produced behind the mirror, then it shows that it's what? It, the it produces what? Virtual image. So, the image distance will be what? Be negative. Then, take your virtual, uh, your focal length as well to be negative. Now, but when you come to the aspect of the aspects of the of the concave, now the concave, take the object distance to be positive as well. Take it to be positive. The object distance, take it to be positive. Then the image distance, it can be positive or negative. The image distance can be positive or negative. Now, you know the reason why I said that? Now, it, if it produces a virtual image, that shows it's behind the mirror, so it will be negative. But if it produces a real image, it will be positive. Now, the focal length, take it to be positive. The focal length, take it to be positive. Now, this is, this, this is different between the words, the concave mirror and the convex mirror. Now, take it very well. Note it very well. Now, when do we have 
the concave mirror produces real image. It produces real image when the distance of uh, the distance from the pole to the object, the distance from the pole to the object is far compared to the distance of the focal uh, principal focus to the pole. I will explain again. It produces it produces a virtual image if the object's distance is shorter to the pole than the what the focal lens is short. When it is short, it produces a virtual image. What am I talking about? Please, we will definitely be taking this as a case to study. Don't forget this. You have to master this. The reason why we are not going to be talking about the convex mirror is because this one is stable. But this one has two cases. And that's why we'll be talking about the concave mirror. Now, we'll be giving you some cases here. And I would love you to master the cases very well. This formula case opposed to, what, to the mirrors. Now, the opposite of what's happened here is for lenses. So, when we talk about lenses, you know about that. So, everything that happens here, the opposite of it is for lenses. So, once you know the one for the mirror, I believe you will definitely understand the one for the lenses very well. So, I want you to be, well, to be patient. And don't forget the fact that I gave you the formulas for the mirrors, which says 1 over F is equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V. Then don't forget, I gave you the linear magnification as well to be that. And I explained where the fo principal focus is and the center of the curvature, what it means. Don't forget, the, dif the distance from this pole to this center of the curvature is what we know as radius of the curvature. The distance between this pole to this focus, principal focus, is what we know as the focal length. And don't forget. Now, I'll be using this diagram to explain the concave properties here. The reason why it is when we have real and when we have the virtual. Let's see. Now, now the case one, the case one says, don't forget this is the reflective side. You have the pole here. If you have the pole here, let's say this is the principal focus. Let me even make it to be larger than this. But as you can see, don't forget, we can see like this, no problem. Now, if, don't forget, after this principal focus, you have C here, which is the center of the curvature. Now, let's imagine that the object is placed here. The object is placed between the pole and the what? And the principal focus. The pole and the principal focus. Don't forget, it's placed here. Then the image will be formed here. This will be the image. This is what is the object. So imagine the object is here between this. Then the the image will be formed what here. The object is here. Then the image will be formed behind the mirror here. Now what are the properties? Now I told you that if this happen, number one is that you should know that the image is formed. The image is formed behind the mirror. The image is formed behind the mirror. The image is formed behind the mirror. It's obvious. The object is here. The image is here. So this is where the image will be formed. Number two is that now since you have it to form behind the mirror, it shows that the image is virtual. It produces virtual image. Don't forget the characteristics. So it produces what? A virtual image. And the only condition for a concave, don't forget this, this case is, is under concave mirror. Is under concave mirror. And the only case for a concave mirror to produce virtual image is VEM. Don't forget, we have it to be REVEM. Re when it produces real image, it shows that it is inverted. But if it produces virtual image, it shows that it is what? It is erect. Now, and as you can see, it produces virtual image because it's behind the mirror. And it's also obvious that it produces what? Erect image. And as you can see, the image is what? It's standing upright. 
the same direction as the object. So it is what? It is erect. It produces erect image. And at the same time, it produces a magnified image. A magnified image, if you can see very well, that the image that is produced here is bigger than the what? Than the object. So it produces virtual image. And I told you that that's what? That when you're talking about the magnification that is magnified, it shows that it's bigger than the what? Than the object. It produces magnified what? Image. Now let's go to another case. Case two. Case two. Let me see. If this is a pole, there's a focus. And there is the center of curvature. Let us now see the object is placed at the focus here. If the object is placed at the focus, what's happened at the focus? Object at the principal focus, then what's happened? The only thing that happened is that the image is formed. The image is formed at infinity. Please take note. They always ask this question. That's the only thing that happened at this case. Whenever the object is placed at or at this principal focus, then the image that will be formed is at what? At infinity. Now let's go to the case three. As you can see, I'm taking it from there. I'm taking it like this. Now the case three. There's a pole. There's a principal focus. You have the center of curvature here. Now let us see if it is placed between these. Now, if the object is placed between between principal focus and what? And the center of curvature. Or between the center of curvature and the principal focus. Now, what happened is that, number one, is that the image, the image is formed, the image is formed beyond C. The image is formed beyond C. Or the image is formed beyond the central of the curvature. The image is formed beyond the central of the curvature. Let us now see. You have the image here. This is the object. And this is the image. But unlike the first one here that produces behind the mirror. Can you see? The first one here produces behind the mirror. That's why it is erect. But this one, it produces beyond the what? Beyond the center of curvature here. And it's not erect. If you can see, it is upside down. And if it's upside down, don't forget, that shows that it produces what? It produces an inverted image. It produces inverted image. And I told you that inverted image means upside down. Is that not? It produces upside down. It produces inverted image, which is upside down. And as you can see, since it produces inverted image, it shows that the, the image is what? Is real. So it produces real image. This is why this one is goes with what? Real. You know, real VEM. But this one is what? Is VEM. Can you see? This one is VEM. But this one is what? Real. That's the, that's the difference in the words, in the cases. But the only thing that now happens to when it is placed between the principal focus and the center of curvature is that if you can see, the image here is also magnified. So it produces magnified image. It produces magnified image. It shows that the image is what is bigger than the what than the object. The image is is bigger than the what than the object. Now let's go to the case four. Case four. Sorry. Case four. Let's say this is the principal focus, and this is the pole rather. This is the principal focus. And this is the center of the curvature. Now, what if the object is placed? The object, if the object, this is the object, is placed at what? At the curvature. The object is placed at the curvature. Now, one thing that happens is that the image will also be formed. The image will also be formed at the curvature. The image will also be formed at the curvature. If the object is placed at the curvature, then the image 
will also be formed at the what? At the curvature. Now, number two is that the image should be real. So it produces real image. Number three, it's the image will also be inverted. So it produces inverted image that is upside down. I explain what they mean by inverted. And as you can see, and at the same time, the object size, the object size and image size are the same. Are the same. The object size and the image size are the same. That is, the size of the object will be the same thing as the size of the words of the image. The image that will be produced will be the same thing as the size of the words of the object. That is it. When the object is placed at the words at the center of the words of the curvature. Now, the next thing is at the last case. This is where I'm going to end. That's case five. You have the pole here. You have the principal focus here. You have the center of the curvature. Now, what if the object is placed? What if the object is placed uh, beyond C? If object is placed beyond center of curvature, what if the object is placed beyond the center of curvature, then the image will be formed here. Image will be formed here. Now, as you can see, the image is formed between between the center of curvature and the what? And the principal focus. The image is formed between the center of curvature and the principal focus. And the other thing that happened is that you can observe that the image is also what? Real. So it's real image. The only exemption is the first case that produces what? Virtual image. Others produces what? Real image. And the third thing is that in this case, you can observe that the size of the image is smaller than the size of the what? Of the object. So the image is what? Is diminished. The image that will be produced here is what? Is diminished. But at the same time, don't forget, is what? Is inverted. It produces inverted image. So this one as well is real. Real, you know, the property is real. Realm. This one as well, don't forget, is what? Is real. Can you see that this one is real? Real, real. Real and inverted, real and inverted, real and inverted. So can you see? The only one that is real is the first one and produces what? Virtual image. Now, this one as well, number four, is that the image size is smaller than the what? Than the object size. It shows that it produces what? Diminished image. It produces diminished image. Now, these are the cases and exemption to the concave mirror. And I believe with this, you should not fear any calculation or any condition given to you. You know, when they mean by diminish, it means it's smaller. That's it. Now, any condition or any calculation given to you under mirrors. Now, if time permits us, in the next episode, I'm going to bring some questions so that we can solve on what? On mirrors, formulas. So with this, but the opposite of this is for lenses. Now, I will definitely show you some questions on mirror. And at the same time, I'm going to give you some uh, explanation, a deep explanation on lenses as well. So for the next episode that we'll be looking at, which will give you questions. Because some of you may be like, ah, how can I use this formula in order to solve questions on mirror? Now, take note. I would like you to just subscribe to this channel so that you'll be notified when I send questions on concave mirror. The way to use this formula, the way to use all these cases in order to solve the questions on the mirrors. And I believe with this explanation, you are good to go. Thank you very much. Subscribe so that you can have more explanation. Like and comment. Watch more of our videos. Thank you very much. God bless you. I love you all.